actually we'll, we'll start start this way. So we know we want the gray at, gray at the top, so then I'm gonna take this red tab, put it at the very top, and pull this down, okay? So that makes sure that I've got my final piece there. I'm gonna flip it over, and then I'm gonna fold this long strap in third. So I'm gonna take the bottom and go up to the buckle, buckle's right here, then fold this up again to the very top, and then that red tab is reversed, so I'm gonna flip that back over, and that it completes it, yep. Huh. And that's how I that's how I carry. So that's a nice little package that fits down into the into the smallest little uh, little eye pack. So I'll show you that again. So I'm gonna push. I think this, this is you get some people that'll get them. They open them up and then it's like. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. So we will do some scenarios. Okay. So the red tab goes to the top. Flip it over. I've got, uh, I don't know, call that 14 inches. I go a third of the way up, go the other third of the way up, and then I take the red tab from the back and then just place it on the very back. So I don't know, is that uh, four and a half inches? So that's about, my, that's yeah. my cat uh, staging. What's up everybody? Chris Lyle, South Carolina Gun School, out here at Train and Learn 2024, again with Mike Martin uh, with USCCA. Uh, also paramedic, correct? Yep, paramedic and fire captain, uh, just east of St. Paul. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So if you're familiar with USCCA, you've looked at any of their materials, or you're a partner or anything, you've probably seen his face on some of that stuff. Uh, you do help design a lot of the medical stuff for yep, USCCA. So I do, uh, so I've created a lot of the curriculum, including the, the core content that is concealed carry and home defense fundamentals. Uh, what we're uh, training on this weekend, from my perspective, is uh, under the book and the curriculum called Emergency First Aid Fundamentals, specifically the class we did was a new class called Save a Life, Control the Bleed. Nice, nice. And I think one thing with medical is definitely there's not a lot of training around medical and everybody associates really this stuff, medical, gunshots, violent right. situations, but there's so much more to that, you could run up on a car accident. Yes, yep. You know, so you're at work and somebody falls down the steps. So one of the statistics we talked about yesterday that's pretty surprising to everybody is trauma is the number one killer in the United States from ages one to 42. And people think, well, isn't, you know, cardiac issues and cancer the number one killer and that's true for older people but ages 1 to 42 trauma is the number one killer so that's people getting in motor, motor vehicle accidents commercial accidents falling down the stairs plus gunshot injuries knife injuries things like that so these are people that don't die the instant something happens in most cases they right. are bleeding out and bystanders on the scene don't do anything more than calling 911 which is important but they don't do the important next steps and that's what we did on this weekend yes yes so the, I, I, your training last year was phenomenal. The training this year was phenomenal. I know we had had some issues figuring out what times we were supposed to stop and everything, but everything <laughs> was still absolutely amazing. And even the little bit that I asked you about with folding, how to fold the tourniquet. Right. I, that's why I wanted to touch on that with you because, you know, some people, they get these, they open them up, they play with them, and then it's like... Yeah, in a lot of cases, people buy the tourniquet and they leave it in the packaging, and that's 60 seconds of time that you don't want to burn by, exactly. by opening the packaging. Exactly. So, yeah. I've seen a lot of med, a lot of med kits uh, where, you know, we talk, sometimes we talk about that and people open it up and it yeah, everything's, nice and, uh, nice everything's and clean, in it. It so. looks like they just it, literally bought it yeah, from the, the store. The, the nature of the training we've, we've done, and I, I appreciate just saying that it's it's different there's not a lot out there uh the the trauma training i've taken before that i've seen before is very skill based we sit in a classroom watch some powerpoint and at one point you stand up and you practice putting a tourniquet on each other and then you sit down you watch some more powerpoint you stand up and you practice putting a compression bandage on each other that's not how trauma works so as a paramedic when we arrive on scene there might be blood everywhere there's panicked patients they're panicked bystanders panicked family members so the nature of the training that we've done 
teaches you how to perfect those skills, like how to perfect the application of a tourniquet, and in, in many cases they're applied wrong, but then it's scenario-based, so it teaches you how to operate in the conditions if you arrive on scene and there's a gunshot victim and maybe there's blood everywhere on the clothing, so the methods we teach are how to locate those injuries, how to evaluate and prioritize those injuries, and then how to select the appropriate treatment that might not be a tourniquet. In fact, in class, I always ask the question to my students, who here carries a tourniquet? And most hands go up, but then I'll ask the question, who carries something beyond a tourniquet? And most hands don't go up. When, when, you, when you think about the benefits of a, of a tourniquet, they're good for this arm, that arm, this leg, and that leg. It's not good for this whole core right. of your body. So if a bad guy's shooting at you, he's not trying to hit your arms or your legs. He's trying to hit your center of mass, just like we teach. So uh, we force this training to teach this evaluation of that's a bubbling blood wound. I need to seal that with a chest seal. I've got an injury to the groin or the armpit. Tourniquets don't go there, so we teach wound packing. And we do, of course, teach appropriate tourniquet application. But this evaluation of, of what I see on this patient forces people into this unknown of working through these mental exercises to figure out what's going to kill my patient first. How do I treat that and then how do I move on to the next thing? And as, as you saw in the scenarios, I teach the students after you've treated everything you've uncovered, do that all over again. Search them head to toe, front to back and find out what you, you might you have just, yeah, you never, you, missed, yeah, so. you never know. Yep. You never know. I, I've got some friends that are cops and they've talked about people where they've gotten on scene from gunfire and everybody's like, yeah, 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 I'm okay. Right. And then all of a sudden the cop looks and starts to see blood sure. coming off through the shirt so, and, and stuff. And that's one of the trickiest ones where we talk about injuries to the torso. So looking at you, you've got a big beard, you've got you the scarf hanging down, you've got a gray shirt. If a bullet wound came right through here, you may say, well, I, I'm, I'm, my chest hurts a little bit, or maybe, maybe not even that. Talking to officers and they don't notice anything other than maybe you're starting to show some difficulty breathing. So as a, as a rescuer, we have to figure out uh, how to search this patient head and toe, including lifting that shirt up or maybe snipping it right off to find that little tiny hole that's maybe pushing out a little blood or a little bit of mucus that tells us a penetration has gone through your chest potentially to the pleural layer that will kill you as efficiently as a gunshot to the uh, the groin or a gunshot uh, to another artery but unless you discover that and you treat it that patient's going to die and a lot of people don't realize the adrenaline as well too yep. adrenaline when that adrenaline gets a pumping yeah. you don't there's a lot of stuff you don't feel uh, if, if, for example a friend of mine coming back from a football game had somebody behind them that was irritated about how everybody in front of him was driving and he thought it was actually just mm -hmm. him. So when they turned in their neighborhood, they actually shot at him. Wow. And he actually ended up getting shot in the back, it came uh, yep. in the back kind of here and just kind of went through. So a, but a tourniquet won't solve that problem, right? right? So yeah, yesterday you learned about uh, about chest seals. That's one of the simplest intervention, but it's not an intervention most people carry. But we also talked about what do you do in the field if you don't have those things? So a injury to the chest where we've uh, got a potential of a tension pneumothorax, we taught people to do nothing more than put a gloved hand over that injury to stop air from leaking into that, into that space. So uh, one of the natures of this training also forces people to evaluate who's the worst injured patient. So we pushed it yesterday where in the final scenario we had three victims, one that uh, had injuries that weren't life-threatening and two that did. So the students had to figure out how to move past this person who was in their face, evaluate them quickly, determine that they weren't seriously injured and move them out of the way to find the patients that were seriously injured and treat the injuries that would kill them first. So the scenarios are, are changeable every single time and I won't, I won't give away the uh, secret sauce on how we've done that, but we've come up with a method in this toolkit to allow the instructors to mark individuals with injuries anywhere on their body, so the, the students have to come in and evaluate them very quickly and figure out how do I solve this overall problem not just sitting in a classroom, standing up and practicing a tourniquet in a sterile environment where adrenaline's not screaming. And I'm sure you saw yesterday, even though everybody knew these these uh, marked up victims weren't really hurt, adrenaline was high. Uh, the, yeah. the rescuer's adrenaline was, was getting out of control in some cases, so we had to teach them or train them how to slow things down, make sure you find the injuries, make sure you treat them. Mindset and awareness. Yep, mindset it, and awareness. Not, you know, not just to self-defense, it applies to the medical as well, too. <laughs> Uh, I know Clayton and I, he's he's had this class, 
you know, and he, we actually partnered last year and did uh, what we called a medical gunfighter nice. where we incorporated this with one of my handgun and classes. That is, I bet that's done in less than 1% of gun classes. We always think about how to successfully train to stop the bad guy, but nobody thinks about anything beyond maybe the legal aftermath. You know, at the USCCA, we talk about the legal aftermath all the time, yes. calling my lawyer, calling the USCCA, but nobody thinks about if I'm out with my wife, for example, and I fire rounds at the bad guy and he's down or he's, he's run away, what do I do if my wife's been shot? Now, as a, as a paramedic, thankfully, I know what to do, but I want everybody else out there who's gun owners to know, I've just saved our lives from a bad guy, but now how do I save the life of my, uh, my wife or my loved one from a, a gunshot injury? And not only that, understanding you've still got to, you can't just focus on that there could be other threats. Yeah, you yeah. kind of, it's kind of, you have to multitask. You've kind of got to be able to kind of handle some of this stuff while you're yeah. still scanning the area. And that was why he and I had gotten together and, and talked about it. And, you know, he's going to be coming down. We did it here last year. Uh, this year, we're going to be doing it the same thing in October at my place. So and as you know, these are these are perishable skills, just like learning to shoot on the range. If you shoot once a year, your skills are not going to be up. This is the kind of thing that if you practice uh, scanning a person's body, cutting their clothing off, finding those injuries that are going to kill them just one time, it's going to be a perishable skill. So if you train on this every single time that you go to one of these advanced classes or at least mentally game these things about what would I do if a loved one was shot and the injury was to the chest? What would I do if I see blood blooming on their leg? What would I do to get that clothing cut away and find that injury and decide is it low enough for a tourniquet or high enough that it would require wound packing? So and an another great thing that we talked about is when you're dealing with those injuries or those trauma victims, talking to them about right. what yeah. you're doing. So even professionals sometimes forget the patient. We treat the injury, but we forget the patient. So we really worked on this during the scenario to talk to your patient, asking them, are you hurt anywhere else? I see blood here and here. Do you hurt anywhere else? Or asking them uh, questions about what occurred. Uh, to, that helps us determine, are they alert and oriented and they haven't moved into decompensatory shock yet? Or have they slipped into decompensatory shock? So we have to move with ultra speed and get that ambulance on scene as fast as we can. And then also we talked about if it's an extended period of time, you know, possibly those victims complaining about the tourniquets being hurting. Right. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to go too much yep. into that. If you want to get into that, you're going to have to come All right. and take the class. So it's uh, called save a life, control the bleed from the USCCA, a brand new course. Instructors are getting certified in this. So look that course up and Save and life. you don't have to be a member to take their courses. Nope, not at all. But now I do highly recommend becoming a member because a lot of people, especially with USCCA, they're like, oh, I don't have my permit yet. I'm like, that doesn't matter. In fact, maybe this is a course that should be taken before they get their permit yeah. because they know how to save a life. If they're exactly. Over, if they're or, it, or in conjunction with it. But right. yes, you definitely need to look them up. You're in, you're up around Clayton, Minnesota, yep. correct? So I'm near, uh, I live near Clayton. So I'm just east of St. Paul. That's where I operate out of. So if you're in the Minnesota area, look him up. Look me up. Yep. USCCA, if you go on there, you'll see him on there as well, too. <laughs> so I appreciate you taking All the right. time. You know, I definitely appreciate you coming out to this event, you know, because this is an absolutely phenomenal event. I always take something away. You know, even with the medical stuff this year, I'm still, there was stuff that we... And maybe it's just me. Maybe my brain didn't process a lot of it. Maybe we did talk about it last year, but there are there is stuff that I am taking away from this year as well as last year. Nice. So, well, you were a great student. I appreciate that, right. man. I appreciate that. I didn't get to play the victim, but that's, <laughs> that, that's all right. I probably I would have been one of the jerk victims. And yes, stuff. you uh, you would have been a loud complainer. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> yeah. I would have I would have been the Karen or the Kevin. Yes, that's for so sure. Right. But I definitely appreciate you taking time, man. Again, Mike Martin, USCCA. Check him out. If you've got questions, you know, reach out to him and stuff. Reach out to me. There's tons of people that can go over this stuff with you. But definitely appreciate it, man. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.